In this video, I'm going to show you three different ways to edit your MIDI in Cubase Pro 9.5. The three different ways are the main key editor or the uh, drum editor. The next one is the lower section down here in uh, the new version of Cubase. And the last one is the edit in place function. So the first way to edit MIDI, which is quite obvious, is when you double click the default setting is to go into the main editor window. You can see on the left hand side, there's the ability to adjust note lengths. So I'll just give a, a quick demonstration. You select the length at the quantize window here. So if you want 16 lengths, you can have whatever's selected and click this fixed lengths button and it makes each of these notes a fixed length, or you can have it, let's say, 1 8 etc., etc. It'll do that. You also have a quick access to a transpose section where you can say how many semitones. Let's say I wanted a whole octave up. I would go 12 semitones, select the notes, and click the button. Um, there's ways of uh, quantizing on the side panel here as opposed to this thing using the, the pop-out box. Uh, quantize the lengths again is in this section. Um, and then there's also chord editing. This is actually really handy. You can uh, create triad or four note chords just by clicking this button here. And whenever you draw it in, it actually inputs that chord in this section in the MIDI. So that's pretty handy as well. Um, there's also ways of, uh, I believe, yeah, uh, adding a chord track and syncing it to a chord track. There's also uh, note expression. So let's say I have the modulation here. Obviously I can have the modulation wheel. It's going to affect all the notes that are in this section uh, following this timeline here. But with note expression, I think this is a VST3 functionality, correct me if I'm wrong, but you can go into the individual notes and you double click on it. And this is the exact same thing here, but now you're drawing in a section just for that particular note as opposed to all the notes in this editor window. That can be quite handy, especially if you're doing like symphonic music or orchestral music, building it up in here. You might need um, a specific note expression on one given note in this timeline, as opposed to all of them. Um, yeah, so that's handy. The expression map, uh, I will explain that by opening up contact here. So anytime you have instruments like this where you have um, key changes it's not triggering samples what it is is triggering um, a group of samples so this here is strings I can have a staccato by selecting this key if I click this key it's going to be tremolo and so on it's, and so forth. So the expression map is for the individual track and what you can do is instead of having to draw in the chord here as a key switch there, um, you can set it up so that there's key switches that stay on the bottom of this section and it's, it's kind of independent, it's still sending the MIDI data like a note, but what you do is you just draw in the sections um, on the bottom and there you can color code them and you can name them on the bottom here so it's much easier to work with uh, than having to know where that key switch is on the the piano roll uh, a couple more functions I'll describe as far as editing MIDI is let's say you have multiple um, MIDI events open um, right now if I click select all and then I'll do the transpose button. It's 
it's taking all the events that I have selected and started editing and it's going to make changes to that accordingly. But there is this button here that says edit active part only where the part that you select is the active part and the other part that is not selected is is changed to white <clears throat> and the colors are faded here. Those are not active. So now when I go select all, it's only selecting the data from the active section. And then when I hit the transpose, same thing is only processing changes to the active part. The second way to edit MIDI in Cubase is to use the lower zone. And this is a new feature as of uh, Cubase Pro 9. And it's a new like window management system. You have access to the mix console, the uh, the main editor, which is basically the same thing as this editor window, has the same functionality on the left hand side and this top section. Uh, you see this little button, you can open it in the lower zone. Uh, you can open up audio or MIDI files. Audio, same thing, you have access to very audio audio warp, hit points, grooves, slices, etc, etc. Uh, in this case, I'll just demonstrate the MIDI. But, um, so the, the reason why I like this, the, um, or I prefer this lower window section, is when you, uh, you can see here, it's moving with the timeline. So it's actually a one-to-one -one with the timeline. And if I'm playing my audio, I can see the timeline is perfectly in line and when I'm editing, making changes, zooming in and out, this follows exactly what's in my timeline. So that's perfect. And that that happens when you have this link project lower section enabled. So you can disable it and make whatever changes you want. Zoom in here and it's not going to affect what's happening on this upper section. Um, and then the other thing too is you can have it scroll at the exact center and it scrolls like how Pro Tools scrolls by default. One thing I forgot to mention is when you have multiple channels selected, you can see it's adding in the MIDI, uh, whatever is highlighted. It can be different channels. Uh, it can be the same channel but different events. So that's quite handy. This happens as well in the uh, in the main editor window. Another great benefit of using this lower window section is you have the ability to look at your MIDI data and audio data on the same page without having to resize a full window. So here I can use this to my advantage if I wanted to align my MIDI to audio hit points or something. Let's say I was triggering um, a new drum rack, like a, a stack of drum samples from an existing set of drums in an audio file, I can either use the function where I create MIDI notes from the hit points, or I can just go in and draw in my own MIDI data and line it up to those, uh, those audio files and the hit points and whatnot. So that is quite handy. And the last way to edit MIDI in Cubase is what's called the edit in place mode. And this, I'm gonna hide the lower section. This is basically taking the piano roll and sticking it onto the channel like so. Now, if you do not see this little button here, edit in place, it's because you have to go into track control settings and it's going to be in the hidden controls in this section here, you're going to have to add it to your visible controls, put it to wherever you want it in the place, apply and hit OK. And now you can see I can edit in place there. The other way to do it is to hit the control on a PC and right click the mouse. And in MIDI, you can go open in place editor. Now this one is actually maybe a little bit easier than the lower section to match your MIDI with, uh, with audio data. So if that's your jam, if you do this lots, this edit in place function I think is gonna be very handy. The other reason why you would want this is you can quickly see 
what's happening in your in your track so you can see okay there's a whole bunch of things the notes are hitting here you have quick visible access to here you can highlight your notes and you can see on the the keyboard here exactly where your notes are that's pretty handy for a general overview of what's going on with this channel um, you have easy access to open and close by using this button so that's handy so I use basically all three methods for editing MIDI. It kind of just depends on what my situation is. I do like to have this main editor window um, and I open it up in my right hand screen so I have a full window view of the timeline here and then a full window view of the editor screen on the right monitor here. That's handy but sometimes it is much quicker to just have it in the lower section and then I can have my mixer in my right monitor. So it kind of just depends um, what exactly I'm doing. And one last quick tip here is if you go into the preference section and into the editors tab, you can select your default MIDI editor in this drop down menu here. So I have the key editor as the main uh, editor, which is that big open the main editor I was describing. You can also have the in-place editor. So when I double click this, it opens up the in-place editor. Um, let's see what else we have. There is the drum editor. So if I was using uh, drums, it opens up this here, which is a drum editor as opposed to a key editor. If I double click on a keyboard style uh, MIDI event, it's going to open up the drum editor. That's probably not so useful as a default uh, setting. And one thing to note is if I do have the normal key editor, it opens up my key editor for these types of uh, events. And here you can see my, I, my drums have an actual drum map on it. When I double click it, it opens up the drum editor. So there's no reason for me to have the drum editor as my default MIDI editor. When I mentioned here, you open up the drum editor whenever I have a uh, drum map assigned to that certain track. That is actually a preference in here. So I can deselect this and now my drums will no longer open up in the drum editor. I like to keep that active. Uh, the other thing that I recommend um, taking a look at is when you double click events, either you can have it open up in the window or in the lower zone. And my preference these days is to open up in the, the lower zone. And for me, it's easy to edit down here. If I need more space, then it's easy to open up the window and then I can drag it to whatever screen I want. Um, that's something to uh, configure and uh, this here as well is when I have this deselected the editor content follows event selection is let's say I have this I double click it opens up this now I'm clicking on other events but it's not changing what the editor has in this editor window if I have it selected That means that whatever's highlighted is going to be in the editor window and I'm not double clicking. So that might be something you wanna configure yourself. Um, let's see here, list editor. This is something that I have not used and it looks very intriguing. <laughs> that is a, hmm. I've never actually opened this up before, so that's news to me. And lastly, there is the score editor. So when I double click here, it now opens the score editor. And I'm sure this is quite handy for people who compose music using actual musical notation. Uh, they might want this as their default editor. And fun fact is you can have this in the lower section as well. So that's cool.
So that is it for editing MIDI in Cubase. And I am using Cubase Pro 9.5, and I highly recommend uh, this version of Cubase, mostly because of this window editing management system. And it, it is quite an improvement on Cubase's um, window management system. Um, that's something that I think many people have requested. And there are a few other additions to this new version of Cubase. You can check their website for a full list of updates to the software. Uh, I think one of the new additions for this version is the sampler track, which I am a fan of. Uh, I've been using it uh, every so often in this project I have it using for a baseline. So yes, thanks for watching. Take care. See you in the next video. Bye-bye. Thank you.